Okay. Anyway. All right. Organize my desk here so I can think clearly. Cool. So another workshop for today, which is exciting. Let me get all set up here to share my screen. Get my picture of my face in front of me so I know when I look weird or not. Cool. All right. Give people another second to show up. Well, screen. Yep. Hopefully, I didn't make too much noise on the microphone. And I just threw that in the microphone. Let's get going here. Right. So what do we want to do today? This workshop is going to cover basically the backend foundations with JavaScript, maybe like the first lesson or so, kind of how to get started, how to get, how to get going. Right. What do we need to do? What are these new things that we're going to be using? In right. We're going to be using a couple new pieces of technology in some new way. First thing we want to do is, at least for my little workshop here, I've made a folder on my desktop, Express Workshop. I'm going to have all my code inside of that folder. So step one would be to open this folder in Visual Studio Code. There's about three dozen different ways I can do that. But basically, I want to have this Express Workshop folder open in Visual Studio Code. Cool. Once I have that open in Visual Studio Code, I can get go. I am ready to go. Right. So we're going to rely heavily on the Node system for running back and JavaScript. Um, we've, no, we've used Node kind of throughout previous courses too for uh, React and Angular. Pretty much any time you're running an NPM command, like NPM start. Uh, and Angular CLI runs through Node. Node is a JavaScript runtime environment. So it allows us to run JavaScript locally outside of a browser. Because typically JavaScript is constrained into a browser environment. This one lets us do that kind of wherever we want on our system. JavaScript is a fun, powerful language. All right, so I am in Visual Studio Code. I have my Express Workshop folder open. And what I want to do first is figure out what NPM packages I have installed globally on my system. Right. There's a fun command that actually tells us that. Right. It's pretty easy to see what is installed on a project. I can just check the package.json. Is there like a global package.json? Where do these things go when we install them? The command to check that is NPM. Increase my screen a little bit. Oh, that's maybe that's too big. Cool. npm list dash g to look at the global packages. Then a weird option that says double dash depth equals zero. I just want like the first step. I don't want to see dependencies of dependencies of dependencies of dependencies of dependencies of dependencies. Of dependencies, of dependencies. Right? It would go around in a circle like that forever. This will just tell me the global. NPM packages that I have installed so far. I have the Angular CLI. I have some Cordova and Ionic stuff I've been playing with. I have HTTP server, right, to run a folder as a mock server, JSON server to run a JSON file as a mock database, and TypeScript, right, 3.1.6. That's for Angular and for TypeScript, right? So all my global packages. So I need to add one to this list. I need to add express generator. So I'm going to run npm install dash g to install globally. Express generator, as long as I spelled that correctly. Express generator. It said it installed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run my previous command and validate to myself that this has installed. This should show me that this has installed a new package globally. Okay. 
And I can see it there, Express Generator 4.16.0. Cool. So Express Generator is a quick way to spin up an Express application. So what is Express? Express is a JavaScript framework that allows us to run kind of basically um, kind of a fake little, I don't want to say fake, it's, it's pretty legit, a, a small web server, right? I can listen to requests and I can give responses back out. This is kind of the beginnings of building our backend system in JavaScript, right? Uh, Node and Express allow that technology to combine and to run and do the things that we need to do. The kind of parallels to Express, um, for C Sharp, we'd have technologies like um, MVC by itself isn't the technology, but like .NET Core, uh, Java, we use Spring and Spring Boot for those kind of things, and servlets, right? Uh, JavaScript has Express, kind of running as a web server. It's pretty neat. So let's make a first quick little Express application so we can run it and take a look at it and kind of see what it's all about. Right. So I already have a folder made, so I can now execute my Express generator. It has a shortcut command, just express. I'm going to do double dash view equals HBS. That's going to use the handlebar templating system for my pages. I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this just example. It's going to make this example folder for me. That goes pretty quick. And it tells me all the files that it made. Here's all the files that it made for me. It gives me some directions to do next, right? CD example, make sure I'm in my project folder. Then install dependencies. Cool, npm install. I'll go into the package JSON and install all of my dependencies that I need. I should see a node modules folder pop up. Cool. If you've worked with React or Angular before, you'll know that this install is actually pretty quick for a framework. Right, there's, there wasn't that much to it. If I check out the package JSON, I can see what exactly was installed. Right, there's only a handful of uh, plugins here. Cookie Parser, Debug, Express, the Express Core Framework, HBS, which is our HTML templating language, HTTP errors, uh, Morgan. Uh, Morgan is a, um, is that a logging framework? I want to say that actually had a funny name because they named it Morgan for a very funny reason. Yep, it's named after Dexter. The show you should not watch until completion. Here is the, <laughs> here's the page on the Morgan plugin. If I can make, can I make my browser bigger? There we go. Right, Morgan, HTTP request logger middleware for Node.js. Right, Blam. Named after Dexter, Dexter Morgan. Wow, the things you learn every day. Cool. So some plugins and dependencies here. Right. So what did it say next? Did it give us a start command? Uh, run and debug. We're just gonna say npm start. npm start should do something. It looks like it's gonna build up our application. Dot bin, www. Right? Kind of some weird boot up stuff that Express is doing. And did it do anything? Should have popped open a page. Post. Uh, what does it spit out on 3000? There it does go out on 3000. Cool. So although it's not saying it, this has broadcasted a site on the address of localhost colon 3000. Right, colon 3000. That's the server and port address of this system. We see Express. Welcome to Express. Right. So if I see something on a page, I should be able to find that page. So I views index. I can kind of see this little handlebar icon, like a handlebar mustache has a title and welcome to title. I'm gonna change this to howdy. And save that, right? My page is still the same. If I refresh it, I get howdy express. Cool. 
Right, so I'm actually able to manipulate the content of this page that my browser is showing. If there's a title here, where's that title coming from? Right, this looks kind of like the uh, interpolation of Angular or putting in uh, React JavaScript. This is kind of a standard way to pull information across from some sort of script to some sort of HTML. Let's see if I can find that real quick. Where's this title coming from? All right. So if I have views and I have routes, I have an index and an index here, maybe this index tells me some information. Right. It has uh, some information here. There's some stuff we haven't quite covered yet, but at least here's Here's an object, here's a JavaScript object, title of express, right? My index HBS page has a title here. That's pretty cool. What if I change this to monkey bars instead of handlebars, right? Let's see what would happen to my page. My page changes from nothing. That didn't change at all. Did I save that? Let's see if I need to restart my application. I'm going to spin this guy back up and see if that changes. I want to see if this says monkey bars. Cool. So that was kind of um, that was kind of a pain, right? I don't necessarily want to get stuck here saving and running my application over and over again. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm not serving the application and I'm going to install additional package. I'm going to install, um, I for some reason keep on calling it no daemon because that's what it spells out, but it's node mon, short for node monitor. I'm going to do npm install dash g node mon. Right. And Enter. That'll install that package globally. Then, once that installs, I can use it. Cool. So instead of saying npm start, I can just say node mod. So what this node mon application is going to do is it's going to look at my system and it's going to look at my server. And anytime I save a file, it's going to reload everything. So if I went in here and changed this from monkey bars to handle bars and save it, I can see this kind of thing rebuild automatically for me. I refresh my page and I get my new content. Right? This gives me back kind of my my hot reload environment. Not quite as hot reload because it doesn't refresh my browser, but the content refreshes a little bit quicker. As soon as I save my files, things will change and update. Howdy, partner. I think it's just a D, right? Save that. Right. Looks like it doesn't need to rebuild for those HTML files. There we go. Apparently, my function. There we go. I hit my function key somewhere. There we go. Control F5. Howdy, partner. Handbox. Right. So that's pretty neat. So so far, I can see that I have kind of the benefit of a framework. I have a script, and I have what looks like kind of HTML talking to each other. But I actually have some additional benefits here that aren't quite as off the bat. On top of kind of tying like a backend script to a run in HTML, I can start building something we generally call like, like an API or a REST endpoint. Right? I can make endpoints that accept data and send back some sort of a response. Right? And by endpoint, I mean generally some sort of an address. Some sort of web address I can go to will give me information that I'm looking for. I can send requests to it and get responses back. Right. In earlier lessons, we probably consumed some endpoints somewhere. 
I know that GitHub has some. GitHub. Right. Here's some documentation on the GitHub API. Right. Maybe I want to do, what was it, users? User, is it a single user? Um, Git users, where's the addresses? I can't remember the address off the top of my head. What endpoints where we can get maybe our repositories off from our user in information? Right? It's an information transfer system. I can make an application and give other people the ability to reach in and get data. I can then start tying our, our front end of our system, which would traditionally be like Angular or React, and have them fetch data from my back end through HTTP requests and then show them on the page. Right? This is kind of that that missing piece that's gonna sit in the middle of our applications and our databases and handle the transfer of that data back and forth, right? It's pretty cool. These systems get pretty neat and they're actually pretty fun to make. Right. So I have, I'm gonna close this project down, right? And I'm gonna look at my page real quick to make sure I'm not going to because, no, there's not that. I should have brought up the sample projects before. Hmm. I figured out, maybe I'll, I'll steal this to the side real quick here. Cool, I'll cheat. I'll have some code out to the side. All right, so I'm gonna make one of these, maybe from scratch a little bit, kind of show what really this is. So I'm gonna make manually an example express folder. Right. So kind of starting from scratch. Right. I'm not gonna use something to generate this. I'm gonna make the bare bones, bare minimum express application. Right. So what I need to do is I need to set up a package JSON. Do that by saying npm, nope, npm init dash y, dash y presses accept for all the options. This will load me up a, in the wrong project. That'd be something. Express, cool, there we go. Uh, npm init dash y. Whatever directory this is ran in, it will create a package JSON file. Right. Pretty standard blank package JSON. Right. Once I have a package JSON, I want to install a couple things. npm install express. Right. I want to install express in my application. That's actually the only plugin I'm going to use at this point, Express. Inside this project, I'm going to make a new file, server.js. I'm going to call this my server. I think it's going to be my simple server that I can spin up. I'm going to go into my package JSON and I'm going to change this. Well, I guess I can keep the test line. I'm going to add an additional script inside of here. This script section is pretty much where my npm commands go. If I did npm start, I can tell it to run a command. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to run my file, run my server.js file. So if I said npm start, it's going to run the node monitor on my server.js file means it pretty much just started up and spun down. It's kind of neat. So server.js, this is where my application's brains are going to live. So what basic brains do I need? I need express. I'm going to say let express equal require express. Let express equal require express. Uh, this is kind of more of a node format for bringing in import statements. 
This is going to say require the express framework and put it into a variable called express. I need to make an application. Let app equal express. Right, create a new app. Right? It's not too crazy. Then I need to say, where is my listen? I'm going to say app.listen on port 3000. And I think that should spin it up. NPM start. Oop, it started. What happens if I go to localhost 3000 now? I'm gonna steal my Morgan page. Cool, can I get, I get an error message, but that's good. It actually means it's up and running, but it's not giving me what I want, but it's running, right? That's the cool part. So what if I wanted to make a simple request? Right? I'm gonna make a simple request inside of this application. So I can do that by saying app dot get. We make a git request. Right? I'm gonna do a git request at the root of the application. So when this application is hit, it's gonna to respond to this request. Right? It's gonna do a function that gets the request and gives a response. all the necessary quotes and responses. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a response. Response dot send. Name it is wicked cool. Right. So that means now if I go to this page, it's going to say name is wicked cool. All I did is I just outputted some sort of a data from that end. I match this dot slash, which is the root of my application, and said, when you make a git request into here, respond with this data. Right. I have a request and I get a response. So sometimes using the browser can get kind of unwieldy in doing this, because generally when I type in an address, I only get git requests. Right. There's many more types of requests to make but those can be difficult to do through just a plain browser. So this is where we introduce a piece of software called Postman. Right. It's gonna spin up right here. Postman allows us to kind of pretend like we're a browser and make all sorts of other crazy requests. I can make that same request here, localhost colon 3000, and I can make a git request. I'm gonna send that. And I get a response. Ammon is wicked cool. Right? That's pretty neat. What if I change my request types to something else? It's going to say it doesn't know what to do. It's an error. Right? So there are four basic types of requests we can do. We can do get requests. We can do post requests. These are going to look almost exactly the same. Post. And I'm going to just change this text to him and made a get request. Am and made a post request. I made a post request. I told my server I wanted to make data. So if I make a post request here, I should now get back. Am and made a post request. Even though I didn't change the address, I'm sending two different requests into this system. So get is a request to get information. Post is a request to send information. I have a put request, put request that I can use as well. It takes a function to get a request and gives a response. And we'll send back Ammon made a put request. Ammon made a put request. That means I can go back into Postman and make a put request. And I get my appropriate text back, and I made a put request. My final type of request, delete. It takes a function, 
It takes in a request and gives a response. You send me back the response of Ammon made a lead request. I take that and I make a delete request and send that in. Bam, Ammon made a delete request. So I've made my endpoint listen to the four primary HTTP verbs. Right, get, post, put, and delete. Delete request, right? Coincidentally, these four types of requests kind of line up to our four basic CRUD operations, right? This is my read, right? Read is synonymous with get. This is my create, which is usually synonymous with post. This is my update, which is generally synonymous with put. And delete is the easy one out of the bunch because it's always named the same. So I have my kind of four data access methods. I can read, create, update, and delete. And I have four different HTTP requests to accomplish that as well. That means if I smartly design this system, I can flow requests from my front end to say, hey, create this data, here's the data. This system can accept that data and analyze it, and make sure it's correct. Send a request down to my database get a response back and send that response back up to the front end, right? I've made a whole chain of requests back and forth up and down my system. And that works great because a lot of these methods match up, right? It seems like it was almost purposely designed that way, right? Which I'm fairly confident it was. I actually hope it was. If this was accidental, then these people are smart people that made these. But I highly doubt it was an accidental. Oh, cool, right? So four different types of requests. Right? Pretty neat, I get a little history of these two, kind of color coded. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I don't need to be in driving. So, pretty much one of these is kind of a, one of these is slightly different than the others. Actually, they're all slightly different from each other. They all have general purposes, right? So kind of a brief overview of what each of these types of requests is. I'm gonna clean up my space to give us some more room here, right? So a get request, right? A get request is generally a passive request for data and does not make any changes, right? All we're trying to do is get data, right? We don't wanna make any changes. We just say, just load me this page, Give me this list of data, give me this single item, give me this array, give me information I'm asking for. Right? The expectation with the get request is that it does not make any changes on the server. It doesn't, it just, hey, give me some information. Right? A post request is generally an active request. Right? It does make a change, it creates something. Right? I'm saying, hey, make this user, log in this thing, do this action. Right? A post request has access to a request body, right? It's one of the only ones that has access to this request body. I can send it information, right? And we'll explore that in just a second. Actually, let's explore that right now. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna log something out here. Console log request.body. I'm gonna have this log out any data that I send to it. Right? And there's a very specific way to do this in our Postman application. So I'm gonna drag this over a little bit here. Cool. So if I make a post request to my address, this section highlights up called body. If I make a get request, I don't have it. If I make a delete request, I have it. And a put, I have it, right? A get, I don't have this. So post, I'm sending data across. I'm gonna hit this guy, right? This gives me some more options below there. The option I want is called raw. 
and instead of text, I want JSON, right? Body, raw, JSON, right? Kind of a, a weird phrase to remember, but when you're posting data, body, raw, JSON, I, I don't know, it sticks to me. I see that in my head every morning. So that means that I can send JSON data across the pipe. Right? I can send an object of data. I can send some user information, information about me. I want to send this. As soon as I make this request, I get undefined. Hmm. Name. Did it need to be body.name? I'm curious. Hey, oh. oh, I didn't put a, uh, <laughs> I'm missing uh, a plugin. Um, never mind on that part. That might be our part two of the workshop, getting that plugin to work. <laughs> we are bare bones at this point. Can I log out to request? No. I can just log out the core request, and see if that works. That might give me the data I'm looking for. Oh, snap. There we go. Here's all sorts of data. All sorts of stuff in this request data that comes through. Let's see if I can find my object. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in here. This is, this is the good stuff right here. Oh, snap. All right, there's, there's too much information there. I don't even know what I find in here. Here we go. Ammon. No, not that Ammon. Not that one. That one. My data I sense is probably hiding somewhere in here, but I can't seem to see it. Right. But in short, I can send data across the pipe. <laughs> probably not the best example of that, but I can send data. Right. And this is kind of how I would accomplish that. Um, all right. You can kind of picture that an application is structuring this data, trying to bind it to some sort of JSON object, and then just passing it down into our system to make this object for me. And then a GET request maybe just gets that data back. Right? It's pretty cool. It's pretty. It's a pretty neat system. We're starting to kind of make some some infrastructure, which is pretty fun. Very cool. So let me look at the lesson to make sure I didn't gloss over too much. I wanted to do this one workshop, just kind of. Give enough information to start playing around with this system and exploring. I have, how do I have color on the screen? Start exploring through here. Make something small enough to be able to play with, right? Make the example express generator app to kind of see what's in there. Like run it, try to break it, see what's, see what's there, right? Something to poke around, something tangible you can kind of take apart is always fun to work with. Right? It's pretty, pretty neat. Mm. Yeah. Views, we got some handlebar stuff. Right? Like I said, handlebars is, is a templating engine. Right? Routes, index, users. We can see there's some routes here. It's a little bit different than ours. It's a little bit more broken apart. But here's that get request to an address. Here's another get request to an address. Hmm, interesting. There's some fun stuff in here. Then www, here's our server.listen. Right? Here's kind of more complex stuff that the express generator gave us. Right? Right? I, like, I like express applications. They're pretty quick and fun to spin up. You can kind of build something really cool and really lightweight and small since it runs on Node. It doesn't take that much overhead to get going. Right. If anybody enjoys working with any type of like small microcontrollers or little mini web servers and stuff, a Node server on those are a piece of cake. 
there's not that much overhead with them. I started low. Oh. So yeah, Express applications are fun. Right. Backend Express is probably one of my favorite courses here because it is, it's, right, it's just fun. It's cool to make stuff, right? It's fun to kind of see all these pieces finally come together. Right? Wiring up our, our Express app to talk to, to use SQLize to talk to our backend SQLite database. Right? And craft endpoints so that our front end, you know, like Angular or React system can pull data. Right. We can now kind of kind of add in all these pieces together. We know enough about some of these languages to to really make them fun, kind of understand what's going on behind the scenes here. Right. Especially with the JavaScript program, because JavaScript it's JavaScript all the way down. Right. This is the same same JavaScript as we would have written for React. It's a little bit different for some of the requirements, and it looks a little bit weirder, but it's the same general JavaScript. Right. Cool. So, make this one a short and sweet workshop. I got like 30, about like 37 minutes on the button. So then, kind of a brief intro to what the next three weeks is going to look like. Right? Building systems like this, kind of digging deeper into what some of these requests mean. Right? How do we use them? How do we, how do we craft them to do the purposes that we want? And since it is JavaScript too, right, make sure that you're outputting stuff to your terminal and make sure you're logging stuff. If you're loading stuff in a browser, make sure you check your JavaScript console in your browser. Right, use all the things we've been using so far with JavaScript to make our lives a little bit easier. Right, check your formatting, make sure you have curly brackets, make sure you have semicolons, make sure you check for any errors or problems or issues. So cool. If anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns, let me have it. Let me know. Right? I'll leave kind of an open dialogue for a couple of minutes here at the end of the video. We can kind of chit chat about things if we need to. Right? Uh, if you're in any of my classes so far, I haven't put out a workshop schedule yet. I'm doing kind of some later ones in the evening today. This is my second workshop of the day. Just kind of see how some evening workshops go. Then I'll have a schedule out tomorrow morning. Uh, maybe maybe what the next two or three weeks look like a workshop so people can plan ahead or plan around them. And if anybody has any suggestions about topics they would like to see or things that they're not clear about, I can always do supplemental ones. Right? I like I like talking and I like making videos. It's fun. Right. Cool. All right, on that note then, I don't see any questions. I hope everybody's happy. It's, it's Tuesday, it's a happy Tuesday, right? The week has just begun, a new class has just begun, we're ready to go. Right? This is exciting stuff. Cool, I'll post this as soon as it finishes compiling and I get a nice email notification about it and I'll pop it up on our channel. Groovy, and then like I said, I'll post workshop schedules for next couple weeks tomorrow morning and then hopefully I will see everybody much more often. Cool. Everybody have a great evening. If you're driving home, drive safe. If you're not driving home and you're already home, then well, sleep safe. Cool. <laughs>